welcome to another Big Bang. In today's programme, we're going to be fooling around with your senses. Later on, we'll have a magic optical illusion to fool your friends. And a giant, beautiful picture of me made with nothing but black and white dots. Now, that must be an optical illusion. And I'll be explaining why Gareth can't tell the difference between an apple and a potato. Gareth, put it down. I've got a trick for you. Uh -huh. I'm going to test your sense of feeling. You're going to tickle me? I am not going to tickle you, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to see if you can tell the difference between hot and cold water. Easy. OK, roll your sleeves up. Shut your eyes and I'll take you over to where the test Oops. is. <laughs> it's over here, it's over here, right? Sorry. Put your hand in there. How warm is that? That's nice and warm, that is, yeah? Correct. Not hot, warm. OK, put mm. your hand in there. Pretty cold. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Now I've got a third bowl of water here. How warm is that? Well, it feels warm to one hand and cold to the other. I can't tell if it's warm or cold. You can't tell, can you? No. You can open your eyes now, dry your hands, and I'll explain why. That is lukewarm water. The thing is, it's your brain that works out how hot or cold something is from the, the signals it gets from the nerves in your hand. And I'd confused your brain by putting your right hand in the warm water and your left hand in the cold water. So when your right hand moved from the warm to the cooler water, it was telling your brain, oh, that's cold. When your left hand went from the cold water into what was slightly warmer water, it told your brain it was hot. One said it was hot, one said it was cold. You couldn't work it out. Good trick, that. And you want to try that one at home. I've got a trick for you, using my bare hands. Ha, 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 Gareth, ha, calm ha. down, calm down. What's the trick? <laughs> I can make you lose all the feeling in your back using my bare hands. Ho, ha, ho, ha, ho, ha. And I'll show you that trick at the end of the programme. to earn yourself five pounds. Gareth, forget it. It's your turn to clean the bath and it's a tenner anyway. No, it's not that. If you can catch this five pound note, you can keep it. Oh, you're on. Right, hold out your thumb and your forefinger. Now, I'm going to drop this five pound note and all you've got to do is catch it. You catch it, you keep it. You ready? OK. Oh. Missed it. OK, one more chance. Ready? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> No way! <laughs> Actually, there's very little chance of you catching that £5 note because the time it takes for you to realise that the £5 note is falling and for that message to leave your brain, to travel all the way down your arm to your fingers and to tell your fingers to close is actually greater than the time it takes for a £5 note to fall over its own length. It's actually a test of your reaction time. Actually, you can make a reaction time test here. Yeah, have a go. What you need is a 30 centimetre piece of card separated into five centimetre brightly coloured strips like this. And you drop that through someone's fingers. And you write on the other side how quick they were at catching it. OK? So at the bottom, it's very, very quick. I've started it. You finish them off. Wow, fast. Pretty quick. OK ish. Uh, poor? Poor, yep. Yeah. Uh, slow coach? Yes. And Kate rubbish. Bellingham at the top, no. I think. <laughs> rubbish. There you go. All right. Um, OK, I'll test you with this. Here we go. Here, ready? Fingers out. On your marks. Ah! What did it say? Poor. Is that what you caught it? <laughs> Poor. My turn. Go on. OK, right. Yep. OK-ish. Well, that's how you can test someone's reaction time, but you can test all the other senses as well. In fact, we wanted to test the taste buds of the people of Britain, so we launched something called the Big Bang Taste Test. Hi, and welcome to the Big Bang Taste Test. We're here to find out how many people can taste the difference between apple, pear, potato and cabbage. All right, let the Big Bang Taste Test begin. Coming at you! 
Ready. We've shredded the food so it all feels the same and we're making everyone close their eyes and pinch their noses. That way, the only sense they can use is their sense of taste. I you it's nothing unpleasant. What do you think that is? Have a chew of it and see what you think that is. Apple, fruit or veg, any idea? Mmm, but you don't know what it is. Well, thanks very much, Natalie. The reason we can fool our taste buds is because your sense of taste relies on what you see and what you smell as well. And if you can't see the food and you can't smell what it's like, you're not getting those extra clues, so you just get confused. You're not pinching your nose. Yeah, but you were cheating, actually, I think. Yeah, yeah, I won, I won, honestly. Oh, no, don't. You've got to keep your nose pinched. You can't cheat. You think that's Taste that. OK, chew that and tell me what you think that is, Gemma. Is pear. it pear? You think that's pear, dear? OK. Turtle. I think that's potato. And oh, you think... no, I think it's pear. <laughs> Come on, make your mind up. Which one is it? Pear. Gemma, you can let go now. <laughs> You're pretty good at this, I can tell you that much. I'll be pear. You can't follow this one. I mean, if you got your nose pinched. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Cap, you haven't even tasted it yet. Keep your nose pinched. Keep your nose pinched. What's that then? I don't like it. I don't like it either. Just put it on there. We'll give it to someone else. Try the Big Bang taste test. We think you'll agree seven out of ten people can't tell apple from potato. Apple, <laughs> hell! <laughs> Messy you are here. That's apple. Am I right? Uh, no! Wow! No. The big bad taste of that works. Can you watch tissue? <laughs> can you believe your eyes? Well, you can if you know what it is you're looking at. What do you think this is? Is that a picture of an old woman? There's her chin, her mouth, and a hook nose. Or is it a young woman looking away from us? There's her nose now. That's now her ear, a chin, and that's just a necklace. It's an optical illusion. Here's another one. What does this say? The thing is, as well as using your eyes to see, you use your brain. And what you expect to see there is Kate in the house. So your brain assumes that's what you're seeing. But in fact, it says Kate in the, the house. I've got another optical illusion for you here. Take a look at this. Two cards. Same size, one in black, one in red. Now, I can make these change size. Watch this. I'm going to stretch this one. And now when I put it down, the card in black is bigger. But is it just because I've drawn the person bigger? Stretch this one. Now, it's the red one that's bigger. But in fact, if you put them together, you see, they're exactly the same size. It's just an optical illusion. It's something you can make yourself. It's important that they really are the same size, so it's best to draw yourself a pattern to uh, make sure that they are. Draw around a dinner plate on a piece of card, something like that, and uh, if you then cut that out, you'll get a piece like this. Now, fold that in half to just neaten up the uh, end bits. This just makes it work a bit better, makes it a bit more effective. Then you've got your proper pattern. Cut out two pieces of card like that that are exactly the same size, and then decorate them. Now, it works well if you put a band at the top and the bottom, but it doesn't matter what you put. You can put a face, a stick figure, whatever. And then you have your two cards to do your very own optical illusion. Today's strange but true story is about the invention of this, the contact lens. Now, the idea was first dreamed up by a rather famous painter and thinker called Leonardo da Vinci. Now, Leo lived in Italy about 500 years ago, and already at that time, people knew about lenses. Glasses had been around for three centuries or so. People knew that if you looked through a curved bit of glass, things appeared bigger. That's no good for contact lenses. You can't put a bit of glass in your eye for obvious reasons. So Leo, being a great thinker, had to think about the problem. When he'd thunk, this is what he came up with. Water has the same effect as curved glass. You look through water, 
and things are magnified. So Leonardo thought, well, why not fill two tubes with water with glass lenses on the bottom, put them over your eyes, and bingo! The world's first contact lenses! <laughs> well, not quite. Obviously, that idea needed some development. Leonardo, I'd stick to the painting, mate. The next giant leap in the development of the contact lens came with this stuff, jelly. Frenchman René Descartes figured that you could coat the eyes with gelatine, jelly. This meant that you could stick the contact lens straight to the eye. It was a good idea, but it never caught on. I wonder what flavour gel he used. A Swiss gentleman called Adolf Fick perfected the first glass contact lens. They weren't very comfortable to wear, but it was great fun getting fitted for them. They put clay over your eyes to get the curvature, and when you took the clay off, you had an impression of your eye. I bet you didn't realise clay could do impressions. I'll be back. Finally, God bless America. From the US of A, Kevin Chewy invented the plastic contact lens, which rested... <laughs> On a bed of tears. <laughs> now this contact lens was much better than previous designs as it was an awful lot smaller and only covered the iris and the pupil so it was a lot more convenient. And Kevin Chewy made an awful lot of people very happy. Now it's time for another optical illusion, but this one's going to be on a big bang scale. I've got Gabrielle Bradshaw here to help me with it. Gabrielle, can you explain what's going to happen? I certainly can. We're making a huge picture made up of hundreds of thousands of tiny little dots. Looks quite abstract at the moment, doesn't it? Yeah. But I think you might recognise the finished image. Mm, I wonder if I can guess what or who that might be. The secret lies in the dots. When you look close up, you can see each one separately, but as you move further away, they become too small to see and they merge together. And the important bit is the separation between them. If they're crowded together, then from a distance, it's going to look quite dark. But if there's white space between the dots, then your eye mixes together the black and the white and you see grey. The more white space there is, the lighter the shade of grey. And computer screens work in a similar way. It might look like this picture is gentle shades of grey, but if I zoom in, you'll see it's actually made of lots of tiny squares that are called pixels, but we don't normally see it. Now, a TV is even more interesting. If you look at one with a magnifying glass, you can see it's made up of only red, green and blue dots. Our eyes mix the dots together, and that's how we see all the different colours. Gabrielle, how's it going? It's going really well, Kate, but my eyes are just starting to boggle. Have you come to help? This method of making a picture from black dots is also used for photographs in newspapers and for sending images by fax. Of course, no matter how good the artist is, the finished picture is only as good as the subject. I tell you, that's a remarkable good likeness, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's it for this week's Big Bang. Ah, yes, but before we go, time for one last trick. Remember I said I could make you lose all sense of feeling in your back? Yeah. OK, turn around, we're back to the back. Just tell me how many fingers I'm touching you with when I do this, Kate. You ready? Here we go. How many's that? Four. No, it's two. Try again. How many this time? Well, that's two. No, that's only one. One last chance. <laughs> How many is that? that? That's all five. No, that's just three. <laughs> Surprising though it may seem, there aren't many nerve endings in your back, and so it's not very sensitive to touch. And that's how I could fool you every time. Yeah, you certainly did.